Dear friends, the importance of a journal like the Jabal of the People's Liberation Front, BPLF, may be lost upon and be entirely incomprehensible to generations that have the news and views at their fingertips and live in an era when dissemination of news and views is no longer the sole monopoly and prerogative of the states. Today's world is very different from the world of 70s. Then dissemination of news and views was controlled by the state and it successfully suppressed truth and disseminated lies unchallenged and it was this situation which needed to be countered forcefully and prompted the birth of Jabal. To present the alternate narrative of the people in contrast to states, lies and untruths. Those who came up with Jabal understood that as long as hunters wrote history, only the hunters would be glorified. Jabal was the narrative of the hunted and it fulfilled its obligation admirably. The circumstances under which Jabal was produced may not be understood unless a background and the situation and circumstances in then Balochistan are known and which have been successfully been blacked out by the state and may be erased from collective memory if not highlighted. The dissident histories of Pakistan by South Asia Resource and Research Center archive and revolutionary papers, digital teaching tools is attempting to highlight those circumstances and situation by presenting the alternative narrative. I will here briefly present facts to help understand the BPLF and Jabal. Beginning with forced annexation of Kalat state in Greater Baluchistan by Pakistan on 27th March 1947, prompted an insurgency by Shahzada Abdul Karim and its subsequent end after his arrest on false assurances. Then came the second assault on Kala on October 6, 1958, on false accusations of Khan Kalat Ahmad Yar Khan's attempts to secede. This resulted in insurgency of Nawab Nawruz Khan, Zarakzai, and comrades who too gave up arms on false promises and were rewarded with a military court trial followed by hanging of seven of his comrades on July 15, 1960. The Baruch resentment also resent, resulted in the Shema Mari led Parari movement, which was based in northeastern Mari Agency and had put paid the state writ there from 1962 to 1969. The 1970 elections under General Yaya led to National Armed aligned Baruch leaders' victory in Balochistan. Sardar Atallah Mengal was reluctantly allowed to form government, provincial government on May 1st, 1972. However, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto led central government created hurdles in its normal governance and matters came to a head with the dramatized arms fine and Iraqi military attaches residence in Islamabad leading to Atallah government dismissal on February 13, 1973. Past injustices and unjust dis dismissal of Atawla's government transformed the people, Baloch people's simmering res resentment to open armed conflict when on 18 May 1973, eight city scouts were killed in an ambush near Tanduri, near Sibi, Balochistan. In response, the government ferried troops and helicopters to Mawand and Murray Agency and the third and the most important insurgency of the Luch began. This insurgency is historically important because it was the most organized and the longest till then. And without this being the trial blazer in approach and tactics, the subsequent Baloch struggles for rights would have lost its way. The Ferrari movement had to evolve and change as the conflict's needs demanded it. And it became the BPLF which, with its fluid and evolving nature, took up the challenge of defending Baloch rights in a more organized manner. Loosely structured it may have been, but was a step forward and did represent Baloch aspirations and introduced them to the world as a paralytic movement could have never done. BPLF was the natural, qualitatively 
higher stage of Harari movement and transform the way the world looked at Baloch struggles of right. The journal Jabal was the product of a necessity to counter state narrative and to disseminate the political stance of BPLF along with the news and ground facts to the people who otherwise would never learn of because of the severe curves on Baloch narratives, which included jailing of all Baloch leaders in the infamous Hyderabad conspiracy tribunal, and the use of state and mainstream media to malign and demonize Baloch struggle for rights. This very important obligation was fulfilled by Jabal, an obligation that carried immense risks for those who hero heroically produced it. Possessing a copy of Jabal was equivalent, equivalent of carrying a black warrant, and that was because the state saw the counter-narrative as threatening its very edifice and structure. It still does. So spared no effort to suppress truth. If possessing a copy carried a death sentence with it, imagine what fate the authors, publishers and distributors would have faced if they were found out. The Baloch and all those who have been helped by alternate narrative should remain indebted and extremely thankful to the authors and producers of Jabal's as they put their lives on line to uphold Baloch rights and the legacy of truth. I will conclude this with the quote from the last issue of Jabal of April 1978 before it was suspended for this quote sums up what the stance and standpoint of Baloch leadership and the authors was regarding the Baloch and the BPLF struggle for rights. In Balochistan, quote, in Balochistan today, the armed revolution is fighting the armed counter-revolution. Here, it is no longer the question <clears throat> of one unit or its breakup, or constitutional safeguards for minority nationalities, or greater power to provinces. These are mere platitudes and totally pointless starters for resolving, resolving the problem because the Liberation Front has raised the question to its highest point, that is, armed struggle for the national and democratic rights and the total liberation of people of Balochistan. Little wonder then that Jabal was a journal that gave nightmares to the rulers. Thank you.